Hello, everyone. I'm Shuo. Welcome back to Shuo Shuo Chinese. Shuo Shuo Zhongwen. Today, we're going to talk about how to use ChatGPT to help us learn Chinese. I will directly come to the conclusion first. At least for now, from what I've researched, ChatGPT is not a magic tool that you can fully rely on. It makes a lot of mistakes, and the Chinese articles it generates are just boring. So you still need me, and you're welcome. However, I believe that technology will become more and more powerful, and the Chinese language support will also become better. So the focus of this video is on how to maximize the use of ChatGPT's current functions. I explored how ChatGPT can help us learn Chinese from six aspects, and from my research, the best three functions of ChatGPT are. Making vocabulary tables and generating an article with those vocabulary, proofreading short articles for beginners, and distinguishing nuances between words. Let's start from vocabulary. This is one of my favorite functions. Let's say I've learned these words today with my teacher or by myself. So I ask ChatGPT, generate a table with the following words like this. Chinese word, pinyin, English translation, Chinese explanation, two example sentences, a quiz related to the word, and then pinyins and translations are quite accurate, and so do the Chinese translations. The quizzes are a bit dumb though, so I made a bit modification. I asked ChatGPT to make the quizzes more diverse. And this is what ChatGPT gave me. Are you kidding me? Seriously, I think I need to be more patient with ChatGPT in 2023. So I made a bit more modification. Much better. So you just need to be more patient. And then I want to test how well I remembered these words. So I said, "Pretend you're my teacher." Ask me to translate these words from Chinese to English in random order. You ask me one word, I answer, and then you continue to the next. Remember, be more patient. Simply put, the result is quite okay, but not one hundred percent accurate. For example, 奶粉 actually means milk powder, but it marked milk as correct. But it caught all my other mistakes other than this one. Also, I want to play this game called "You Describe, I Guess" that I usually play with my group class students. So I said, "Can you pretend to be my teacher and use Chinese to describe one word from the previous list and ask me to guess what is the word you are describing?" Hmm, quite accurate. Again, there were a few words that ChatGPT explained a bit weirdly. But I guess it has something to do with the Chinese language support, which might be better in the future. To summarize, ChatGPT is quite useful when you want to organize your newly learned vocabulary into a table and help you review the new words through different exercises. The key is to elaborate your request and be more patient. Also, ChatGPT usually gives accurate explanations of Chinese words. Both their English translations and Chinese explanations. So I guess you can use it as a great dictionary. We're going to continue with the previous list. I asked ChatGPT to write a Chinese story with the words in the previous list, and it gave me this. It's really, really helpful because I can review the vocabulary in different sentences and practice reading. And of course, you can ask ChatGPT to generate some quizzes related to this new article to test how well you understand it. I've also watched some videos talking about how to use ChatGPT to learn a language. Most of them recommended asking ChatGPT to generate a story using the words in the student's level. So I tried that too. But the stories and articles are quite boring.
it's perfectly fine if you are a beginner because reading comprehension and understanding different sentence structures are more important to you. But if you've reached a higher level, let's say HSK4, you might want to improve your Chinese, but also read something more interesting and meaningful. I sincerely recommend the articles in my independent learner program more than the ones written by ChatGPT. You can choose different learning tiers based on your learning level. The topics are closely related to our daily life, but also kind of deep. Like what Chinese people will do when a loved one is diagnosed with a serious illness, or a Chinese person's mental journey after moving to Europe, etc. I also shared some personal stories. So if you're interested, click the link in my description box. To conclude, for reading, I wouldn't ask ChatGPT to generate stories or articles if I've reached HSK4 level or above. But it's a great, great idea to give ChatGPT an article that I have learned before and ask it to generate a similar one so I can practice my reading skills and my vocabulary. I asked ChatGPT to make a conversation with me with A1 to A2 Chinese vocabulary. It did a great job to keep this conversation going as well as give simple explanations and English translation to the content I didn't understand. Also, if ChatGPT mentioned some words I didn't know, I would ask it, for example, 美味是什么意思呢? And ChatGPT explained to me. And then I asked ChatGPT to pretend to be my teacher and correct all my mistakes as well as keep this conversation going. And this time, it didn't go very well. To test ChatGPT, I deliberately made a mistake. 我觉得中国菜是好吃. We need to drop the 是 here. The correct sentence is 我觉得中国菜很好吃. But ChatGPT didn't mark the mistake. And then I made another mistake. I used 和 to link two sentences. Again, ChatGPT didn't point it out. Then I installed an extension called ChatGPT Voice, and I was trying to make a real conversation with it. It still uses the voice of a machine, but it's not a big deal. But when I asked ChatGPT to speak slowly because I'm a beginner, ChatGPT said, sure, I can speak slowly, <laughs> but still it used the same speed. Say it slowly, slower. And then I switched to Spanish because I'm really a beginner. And this was the moment that I realized ChatGPT is not the best tool for me to practice conversation with. Guaquiles, guaquiles preguntas. Lo siento, pero no entiendo lo que quieres decir con amqua. Guale, guaquiles, guaquiles preguntas. Lo siento, pero tampoco entiendo lo que quisiera. Lo siento, lo siento, pero no puedo entender. Pregunta a mí, por favor. Claro, ¿quieres que te dé algunas ideas de preguntas que podrías hacerle a tu papá? Aquí te dejo algunas sugerencias. ¿Cuál es tu comida favorita? ¿Tu vida cuando eras joven? ¿Qué valores son importantes para él? ¿Ha sido el mejor viaje que has hecho? Broken sentences and wrong pronunciations are perfectly fine if you are speaking with a real person. But the voice input cannot recognize them. Therefore, you may easily put yourself in an awkward situation when talking with ChatGPT voice. In sum, it's okay for you to use ChatGPT to practice conversation through typing, and you don't care your sentences to be 100% correct, as long as they are understandable and the conversation gets to keep going. So I went to the homework of my group class students and found a paragraph and ask ChatGPT to proofread. ChatGPT made some different corrections from me. It didn't spot the obvious mistakes, 
but focused on the trivial ones, which I usually wouldn't consider them as mistakes. But I think it works better for beginners. I will show you my own example. This is something I wrote as a beginner in Spanish language. ChatGPT corrected for me and highlighted all my mistakes. Even though, as I mentioned before, ChatGPT may not be able to spot all my mistakes out, it's still helpful for me as a beginner to have a big picture of my weak points. So to conclude, I think ChatGPT is more useful for beginners in terms of correcting mistakes and proofreading. Finally, we come to the grammar part. Surprisingly, ChatGPT did a brilliant job explaining the nuances between Chinese words, which is one of the most difficult parts in many people's Chinese learning journey. I can easily find the answers of those common questions that my students asked, like what is the difference between 经历, 经验, and 体验, 理解, and 了解, even some really tricky ones like 引起, and 导致, 变化, and 改变. To be honest, I'm really impressed. However, when it comes to a bigger grammar structure, like how to use 把, 这, 了, ChatGPT's performance is not as impressive. To understand those grammar points, you need to switch off your English brain or whatever your first language is and switch on your Chinese brain so that you can understand the feeling of the language, the feeling of the grammar from a completely different aspect. To be honest, I think my grammar-related videos are doing a much better job. Shameless plug. Now your friends text you and ask you what are you doing? You look at your memory from 5 seconds ago. Capture one screenshot and send the information of the screenshot to your friend. 我在听音乐 在 plus verb is like take a screenshot of a continuous video. While 这 is you describing the whole continuous video to others. 那天 and if you want to have a clear picture of the basic Chinese grammar system, you are more than welcome to check out my structure review plan course, which can switch your brain into Chinese mode within two to four weeks. I also want ChatGPT to practice my understanding of a certain grammar point. And it did a really bad job. I'm not sure if it's my prompt or something else. So if you have better prompts for using ChatGPT to practice grammar and to practice anything else related to Chinese learning, please let me know and let other students know in the comments down below. In a nutshell, I think ChatGPT can be a great auxiliary tool and a good TA for me as a teacher, but you cannot fully rely on it. So if I were a beginner in Chinese language, I would first find a teacher to motivate me and learn with them systematically. And I will also use ChatGPT as a tool for me to practice my vocabulary, my reading comprehension, and also check the nuances between different words. And last, I will purchase Shuo Shuo Chinese Structure Review Plan course and join the Patreon subscription. So this is all the content of today's video. I hope you like it. I'm Shuo from Shuo Shuo Chinese. I will see you in my next video. 再见! By the way, if you have reached HSK5 level or above, the function of rewriting your words in different tones is quite interesting. For example, I wrote this simple little self-introduction and asked ChatGPT to make this paragraph more academic and professional, poetic, funnier and sarcastic. You can just play with it more and dig more.